how was first meeting Paul Heyman at the time? Was he actually the booker at the time when you were there? So when I um, when I started, I had met Todd right away, like you had mentioned. Um, and it wasn't the House of Hardcore. It was just called the ECW. I think it was called the ECW Wrestling Academy or something like that. Um, and uh, after I, I spoke to Todd, I was aware of Eddie Gilbert because Eddie was the booker at the time. But they were transitioning Eddie out and bringing Paul in. So when I was training, I never met Paul. Uh, Todd came down, supervised like once or twice. Uh, my, my trainer was uh, JT Smith. So JT was always there helping me. Stevie Richards would come down. Um, I was the only girl there. It was all guys and me. And then um, when I had my tryout match, it was Todd. So I, I was trying to learn to wrestle at the time. And they made me wrestle. And um, right after I was done, I, <laughs> I remember running to the bathroom and just throwing up because my nerves were so bad and um, just threw my guts up and came back out. And then I was told that Todd went and talked to Paul. And now I didn't really know of Paul Heyman, you know, cause I didn't watch WCW at that time. I used to watch, like I was a fan of WWF and global, the Florida promotion. Like I watched those two and um, I wasn't a lifelong wrestling fan. I had gotten into it late, like 18, 19 years old. So now I'm like 20, 21. I don't know much about the business. I don't know anybody in the business. And um, I get a phone call to come to Montgomeryville. And that's where I met Paul. And I remember there were these steps and then the locker room was at the top. And uh, I went up and I shook his hand and I introduced myself and he had said, well, he goes, uh, you're going to take a choke slam tonight. And I, I said, I don't know what that is. Cause we didn't go over that. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And he was just like, what, you don't want to take it? Cause that's how Paul, you know, was, I said, no, no, I'll do it. I just, what is, I don't know. You know? And he said, don't worry. He said, they'll just come and grab you when it's time. So I said, okay. So now I don't know what's going on. I'm the guest timekeeper, which means I'm sitting at that table the whole time. I'm watching matches and whatnot. And uh, they introduce me. And all I'm told is somebody's going to grab me. That's all I'm told. So they introduce me and I come walking down the steps and I'm doing this regal wave with like, I just won, you know, I'm the queen of England or something. And uh, I went and I sat down and I watched the matches. I rang the bell when I was supposed to ring the bell. And then all of a sudden, it's Al, 911. He comes and he grabs me by my hair and he pulls me in. I had no idea what to expect. And they do the choke slam. And, you know, I'm assuming Paul was watching from the rafters because that's what Paul did. And when I landed, it was that white noise. It was you, you heard a gasp and then you heard nothing because nobody knew who I was. I was skinny as a rail. I was like 110 pounds. And they thought he broke me in half and I was selling, but I was really selling because like it hurt and they put me on like a stretcher and then they took me to the parking lot and they put me in a car and they, I think it might've been Stevie and they said, drive her right home. She's not allowed to come back to the locker room, just take her home. And I went home and I was like, okay, what now? I don't know. Like, you know, I, 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 I assumed I was waiting for a phone call. And I think it was Dreamer. And he called me and he said, come back. We want you here. I don't remember where it was. And I, okay. And I kept doing house shows for them. And then I was Penny Pulsations. We were at Pulsations Nightclub. And <laughs> Penny Pulsations. I wrestled a match. And I remember Paul telling me because I was like am I going to be a female wrestler is that what you're going to brand me as and he said no and I said really and he said female wrestling doesn't sell women's wrestling doesn't sell and back then I guess it didn't at that point and he said you're going to be a manager he said trust me I know what I'm doing he knew what he was doing <laughs> because uh, you know like I learned more along the way I wasn't in school that long in training because like right from training I think I trained for two months and I did my first indie show and then I started doing shows for ECW so I didn't I didn't even work on indies really like one of one of the guys took me to a show just to get me out there and you know so I knew what was going on but 
once I started doing shows for ECW, like I just worked for them and I was doing a bunch of house shows. And then a year, a year or so later is when I got on TV. Hmm. Uh, with Paul, um, do you have a good story of uh, either trying to get him on the phone and then h either him saying, oh, someone else is on the other line, then you can never hear him again. Or did he ever like get some like weird bereavement flights for you or just like some wacky scheme? Uh, what were the ones? So you're familiar with <laughs> with Paul Heyman, I, uh, I, I take it. Uh, no, with me, I can always honestly say that Paul picked up for me. Now, I have seen him kayfabe other people. One time I was standing with him and having a conversation and I saw Jazz walking up and he must have owed Jazz something i money i don't know what he owed her and you know jazz is very laid back she's like hey paul you know i need to talk and he real quickly put his phone up to his ear <laughs> like standing there and he starts talking and then the phone rang and jazz was just like damn because she knew he was lying <laughs> and i just kind of stood there like ah, you know i don't know but honestly like he always picked up the phone for me. I didn't have any medical bills. Um, I didn't have any crazy uh, flight things that we had to say somebody died for, but it has happened. Yeah, <laughs> it has. Uh, just because you mentioned it, he never owed you any money, did he? Or did he? Well, no, no, he, he did owe me money. I didn't say he didn't owe me any money. I said he didn't, uh, he always paid my medical bills. So anytime I had to go to the hospital for some, like when I broke my hip, I had to go in the ambulance and I had to be rushed over and I, I had to get crutches and they, they put me on Dilaudid and all this crazy stuff. And I didn't pay a dime for that. Paul took care of everything. Um, now, in the end, I was owed over $50,000. So, yeah. <laughs> um, everyone always has the same thing. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I think I'm getting this line from somebody else. But they said everyone who Paul has either screwed over or owed money always says it with a smile on their face. Here's the thing. This is my outlook on it. If it wasn't for Paul Heyman, I would not be chatting with you today. Okay. Um, I was treated like a queen my whole time that I worked there. I, I was taken care of. Um, I, I had a great deal. You know, uh, I enjoyed what I did. It was the best seven years of my life, you know, uh, work wise. Now, towards the end, none of us were getting paid. And uh, I, I never took draws when I was in ECW. And this time they were like, you better start taking some draws or else you're not going to get any money because we weren't getting paid. It was like 10 weeks in a row. Finally, I went up to him and I said, Paul, we're 10 weeks behind on checks. And I was getting bounce fees, like $35 every time a check would bounce. You know, so they were accumulating. It was a lot, you know. He said, what do I owe you? So I calculated it and I put the bounce check fees in there and I said, here's the amount. Well, he must have went to the merchandise money and he handed me a lot of cash. He said, here. So he made good on that. But there were other things that I was owed that I never got back. And, you know, he took someone like me who had no experience and he made me a star. Right. How can I be mad at that? I traveled the world. I, I went to Japan twice and got to work, which I never got paid for either trip. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got to Japan, um, you know, I got to wrestle in Canada. I got to go places that a normal person would never get to go. And that's the way I look at it. I met people to this day. I call my family. Without Paul, that would have never happened. So in a way... I wish I could get that $50,000, but there's more to life than just money. And I wouldn't have the career and the life that I have today if it wasn't for Paul. So that's the way I look at it.